three years ago, I did something I had never done before that forever changed my life. I posted my first YouTube video. With no background in film, having never owned a camera, and really not knowing what I was doing, it was a surprise even to me, something I accidentally fell into. You see, it all started a few months earlier when a classmate of mine told me that he was moving from California to DC and asked if I wouldn't mind flying out to California to help him move. He said we could drive just a few hours each day and make a week-long road trip out of it. I was totally in. I'd never seen that part of the country and I couldn't say yes fast enough. But I had an idea. What if, instead of taking the most direct route and stopping at hotels along the way, we went a little bit out of our way to stop at Friaries so that we could meet new Friars and get to know a few new ministries across the country? And what if while we were doing this, we got a camera and filmed the whole thing, made a documentary out of it all? You know, Friars sent out two by two across the country, showing off the life and ministry of the brothers. It would be awesome. You know, because tons of people, having no background in film, having never owned a camera, and not really knowing what they're doing, just pick up documentary filmmaking one day and create well-crafted and entertaining works of art. This would be great, and totally not corny or poorly put together or hard to watch. Edgardo and David made a great team today. Hearing about the first Franciscans in this country and all they did was really fascinating. But being able to share it with brothers that keep that legacy going even today, now that was inspiring. Oh God, yeah, that's even worse than I remember. Bad editing, inconsistent sound, shaky camera, poorly composed shots. This is exactly the sort of project you'd expect given the talent involved. But at least, at least it wasn't awkward or forced or anything like that. It was totally natural. All right, Lalo, let's play a game. I spy with my little eye something that is green. Everything here, grass. How did you know? Because it's green. Because <laughs> it's green. Okay, yeah, that's that's enough, please. No more. Hey everyone, we're here in Phoenix at St. Mary's Basilica, staffed by the Friars. It was a pretty good day of travel, about five, six hours through the desert, and some absolutely breathtaking scenes. Yeah, these were not award-winning. But you know what? I knew that even at the time, and there was still something very cool about them. I worked so hard on even the simplest of tasks. I learned a lot as I was going. And at the end of the day, I was able to produce eight videos in eight days sharing our trip. They may have been pretty rough, but I had made movies. And so with a little success and the prospect of getting better, I continued with the experiment. Over the summer, I filmed some reflections, answered some questions on camera, and even finished the summer with an ambitious, yet not entirely terrible documentary about our trip to Nicaragua. And just like that, a surprise to us all, I was a YouTuber. Encouraged by this early success, I decided to just keep trying new things. Over the next two years, I experimented with different styles and formats, creating a variety of series, trying on different roles, and just seeing what was possible. After just one year of making videos, I had already matched the total number of hits on my blog, the result of five years of writing. Clearly, if I wanted to evangelize and catechize, this was the place I needed to be. But to what extent? How much time could I actually commit to making videos? Was this just a hobby that I did on the side? Or was it something more? Last summer, with the help of God and a supportive team, I came to some definitive answers to these questions. I was gonna go all in. Rather than treating this as something I did just in my spare time, I was going to approach it as a ministry. I petitioned my province and got permission to fundraise. I was able to upgrade my equipment, to take a class online in editing, to devote more time to this work, and really just to set my standards a lot higher. And it has paid off. Over the last year, I've produced 70 videos, more than the previous two years combined. I upped production value, expanded to Instagram and Twitter, and began to be truly proud of the results. At one point, I was producing three videos a week on a variety of topics and loving everything I was doing. Unlike those early videos, I no longer cringed at my work. This is what I always wanted to do. But now I'm at an impasse. You see, as with anything, there's a diminishing rate of return. At the beginning, I had to work really hard to do the simplest of tasks, but I learned a lot in a short amount of time. 
Now, I realize that I'm closer to this end of the spectrum and I'm closely approaching my capacity. As someone with no film background, no media training, completely self-taught and entirely self-run, I've learned a lot over the years. But I also realize that my ceiling is only so high. So what does that mean for the future of breaking in the habit? Two things. First, I wanna focus on the first half of this chart. Everything I've learned over the last three years, and I wanna share it. I wanna encourage new creators to make more content. I wanna empower people who, like me, don't necessarily have a background in media, but have a story to tell. I wanna teach individuals and communities how to create effective content that inspires and changes lives. And heck, why not? I even wanna finance projects and new creators to get them off the ground. It took me a long time to get where I am, but it doesn't have to. There are people out there with stories to tell and new ways to spread the gospel, and there's no reason that they have to start where I did. There's no reason that they have to walk this path alone. I've already walked it. I've learned the lessons, I've made the mistakes, and I wanna share them with others so they don't have to. But it doesn't stop there. As cool as this part of the chart is, and as much as I wanna share that, this part of the chart also needs some work. I wanna break through that ceiling. When I look at some of the amazing things online today and see how easy and accessible it is to create content that used to be reserved to professional movie studios, it frustrates me that there isn't a whole lot of Catholic content to compete with it. Why can't we have the message and the truth and good theology, the substance that makes us Catholic, along with the production value and creativity of the best channels on YouTube? Why do we have to settle choosing one or the other? I may be reaching my limit of technical skills, but I know that there are incredibly talented producers and editors and cinematographers out there that could blow the roof right off. That's what I want to do with Breaking the Habit. That's what I want for the future of this channel. Not only to empower new creators to start from the ground up, but to bring together the best and the brightest from the Catholic world with the best and the brightest from the cinematic world. I see what someone like Casey Neistat's doing with 368, creating an environment of collaboration and support to produce something much greater than the sum of its parts. And I wonder, why can't we do that? Why can't we compete with the best channels on YouTube? Why can't we create content that attracts not only the church-going audience, but engages and evangelizes the world? That is the mission of Breaking in the Habit, and I'm looking for partners. Maybe you can support the mission by donating financially. Maybe you want to create your own channel, but don't know how. Maybe you're already in the entertainment industry, but want to use your skills for the greater glory of God. Or maybe you can commit yourself to praying for this mission each and every day. For a mission this important, we need it all. The last three years have been an amazing ride, and I can't wait to see what the next three brings. If what I've said inspires you to want to do more, consider yourself called. I look forward to hearing from you.